Hello and welcome to our Thelma Trousers sewing tutorial. We are super excited to be sewing with you again. We haven't recorded one of these in a while, so it's great to be back. Um, in this tutorial, you will learn everything you need to know about how to make your own perfectly fitting trousers or jeans. And we will cover everything from the pockets to the fly to getting it fit perfectly on the waist, all the things you need. So follow along, it's super step by step. In order to do this tutorial, you will need the Thelma Trousers Sewing Pattern, which is available from our website, mademywardrobe.com, and it comes in printed or PDF format. We also sell the fabric and the kits and the haberdashery, everything you need to make these trousers. So check that out if you're interested. Before we start cutting out any fabric, we need to work out what size you're going to make. We have loads of really detailed information on sizing on our website, but if you open up the instruction booklet to page four, you will see our body measurement chart, and that's what you need to refer to. So take your measurements, do it as accurately as you can, and then see which one you are closest to in the body measurement chart. If you don't fall into an exact size category, don't worry, that's absolutely fine. Most people don't check out our blog and look at all of the instructions on how to make the pattern work for you. All right, let's jump onto the construction. I've cut out all my main trouser pieces in denim and then my pocket bag pieces in silk, but you can do your pocket bag pieces in cotton if you prefer. Just make sure you also cut out interfacing for the waistband pieces and piece N of the fly and interface those before you begin. I'm threading up my machine with a nice strong thread. I'm going to use a contrast color so that you can easily see where I'm stitching, but feel free to use a more matching color to your fabric if you prefer. You might also want to pop a denim needle or a strong needle on your machine if your fabric is thick, because that will help you get over any thick seams um, and just make sure your stitching is really strong. Okay, we start with piece M. We put the two together, right sides together, and pin around the curved edge. We're then gonna stitch using a straight stitch and a two centimeter seam allowance. Super simple. We then trim away any excess seam allowance and cut little triangles into the curve. Make sure you don't cut into your stitch line, just cut a few millimeters away from the stitch line and remove the triangles that you've cut out. And then this will allow you to really easily turn it through, press it and get a nice curve on your fly piece. We're now going to overlock pieces M and N. If you don't have an overlocker, don't worry, you can use a zigzag stitch instead. Next up, grab piece A, your front trouser, and overlock the front crotch. Again, if you don't have an overlocker, don't worry, just zigzag. Next up, grab the right side of the front piece, which is A, and piece N, and lay them right sides together, making sure you match at the notch. You're then going to sew a straight stitch with a two centimeter seam allowance from the notch up to the top, and do a nice strong back stitch. Next up, we pin the piece N out of the way, just using a pin, pop it in there, and then we're going to grab our other piece A and lay it on top, matching the crotch seams. We then want to pin around the curve up to where our previous pin was and then we'll sew once again with a two centimeter seam allowance, stopping just before you catch any of piece N in your stitching. Then 
Then grab some scissors and just make a little snip into your seam allowance up to your stitch line and this allows you to pull piece end through and get it sitting really nice and flat. Grab your iron and press that seam allowance and all the way up piece end to give you a really nice smooth finish. Feel free to use some steam if you want to. We then top stitch where we've just pressed, so straight up piece N, a couple of millimeters away from the fold. You should be able to see it really nice and clearly with my white thread just there. Then grab some chalk and draw yourself a nice line. If you're using a chunky zip, you want the line to be about one centimeter away from the fold. If you're using a skinny zip, then it can be 0.5 centimeters away from the fold. I'm using a chunky zip, so I've gone ahead and gone for one centimeter, and then I'm just pinning the zip in place and switching over to a zipper foot on my machine. So I've got the left side of the zip right side facing down and just really slowly take your time and sew along the edge of the teeth. Now that we've stitched one side of the zipper on, we can fold piece end back on itself and then we're going to stitch around the curved edge of piece N. You can do this from the wrong side of the jeans but the stitching is going to be really visible on the right side of the jeans so just make sure you take your time and get a nice smooth curve as you sew around the edge of piece N. I used a nice contrast top stitching thread here, so feel free to do the same. Then we switch back over to the back of the jeans, and next up we're going to sew the other side of the zip onto the other side of the seam allowance. So just take your pins and line up the edge of the zipper tape with the fold in the fabric where your seam allowance is. It's useful to have a look from the other side and just check you're happy with the placement before you sew. If you want to, I really recommend hand stitching this first before you jump on the machine. And then when you're ready, you can sew it. Next up, grab piece M, which we prepared earlier and line up the overlocked straight edge with your seam allowance on your zip fly. And we are just gonna stitch that again in place, doing a nice straight line of stitching, taking it as slow as we need to. Super congrats everyone, you finished the fly. I promise that is the hardest bit. Now we're gonna move on to the pockets. So grab pieces D and put them right sides together with your front trouser pieces A. We're going to pin around that curve and then we want to straight stitch with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Once we've sewn that, grab your scissors and just cut little triangles like we did before into the seam allowance. That will allow us to get a really nice curve on the pocket once we turn it through and press it. Now we want to top stitch those pocket bags in place. You can do one or two lines of stitching. I recommend doing one about 0.2 centimeters from the edge and one either 
0.5 or one centimeter from the edge. However you prefer, whatever you think looks good in the stitching thread that you've got. Next up we grab piece C, the pocket facing, and we wanna overlock the curved edge. Once again, feel free to zigzag if that's what machine you have. Now place piece C on piece E, right sides facing up for both pieces and pin in place in the corner. We just want to straight stitch all the way around that curve and then up the right angle of the corner to keep piece C really secure in place. Now put pieces D and E together and again just pinning all the way around that curve, lining up the raw edges. We're going to stitch with a straight stitch and then an overlock if you want to. Now that our pocket bags are sewn together, we can sew the pockets in place. So just pin them along the top edge of piece A, the front trouser, and then down the side seam, making sure everything's sitting really nice and flat. We then want to do a straight stitch nice and close to the raw edge so that it will get hidden in the seam allowance later on. Now that the pockets are in place, we can overlock all the way down the side seam of the legs. Awesome, good work everyone, stick with it. Now that the front legs are done, we're going to move on to the back legs and then we'll be able to put them together. Next up, grab piece G, which is the yoke, and pop it with the back piece, which is piece B, right sides together, making sure you match at the notches so you know you've got the pieces the right way round. Take it over to the machine, and we're gonna straight stitch across there with a two centimeter seam allowance. This is going to become our first flat furled seam and we have super detailed instructions on how to do this in the booklet. But if you're not sure, we take the seam allowance that we've just sewn and trim one side of it. So we're trimming the trouser leg side of it um, down to 0.5 and then pressing that seam allowance open using lots of steam to get it really flat. And then with your longer seam allowance, you wanna press that over the shorter seam allowance and then fold the raw edge in. So take your time here, try not to burn your fingers, just take it as slow as you need, making sure it's all really neatly folded under. And then once it's pressed, we can sew it, just sewing nice and close to that folded edge all the way along. Again, remembering that this stitching will be visible on the right side, even though we're sewing from the wrong side at the moment. Next up, we're gonna lay the back leg pieces, which is piece B together, right sides together, and then sew the back crotch. We'll use a two centimeter seam allowance once again, and just take it slow over that thick seam. And again, take the curve as slow as you need to get a nice smooth stitch line. Next up, you can either flat fell this seam like we just did, or you can trim down both seam allowances, overlock it, press it to the side and top stitch it. You choose whichever technique you prefer and whichever technique your machine can handle. Here you can see me top stitching that center back crotch. That'll make sure it's really strong. 
Now we're ready to overlock the side seams of the back trouser, piece B. Um, just doing a nice smooth overlock all the way down that outside edge. Awesome, let's jump onto the back pockets. We start by overlocking all the way around the outside edge of all of the pockets. Here you can see me doing it in a way that's really efficient for using thread. So just lining them up one after another and then fold down the top edge of the pocket and with a straight stitch, stitch all the way around the pocket with a one centimeter seam allowance. Trim those corners using your nice sharp scissors and then you're ready to turn them through. You want to try and get a nice sharp point so use something pokey to really push out the corners before you press them. And then as you're pressing the top you can also press in all the other sides using your stitch line as a guide that will really help you get a nice sharp crease. Now we're ready to top stitch that flap down. You can do one or two lines of top stitching as you prefer and feel free to add any extra detail onto the pocket if you want to. Now we're going to mark where the pockets need to be if we haven't already done that. So just make little holes in your pattern and use chalk to make some dots and then use those dots to line up where you want your pockets to go. These are not exact. If you would rather have your pockets in a slightly different position, please feel free to have them where you want them. I like to do a little triangle detail at the top of the pocket to make it extra strong so that when you're putting your hand in and out or taking your phone or wallet out of your back pocket, there's no chance of it ripping. So just do a nice small triangle at the top and then follow the pocket all the way down trying to keep the stitching as neat as possible and as close to the edge as you can. Awesome, we're really getting there now. Let's put the legs together. So with pieces A and B right sides together, match them at the crotch. Try not to bend a pin like I did and just pin all the way down the inside leg. You want to straight stitch with a two centimeter seam allowance all the way down the inside leg and then you can either do a flat felled seam like we did before or you can just overlock and top stitch, whichever you prefer. Now we want to pin all the way down the outside leg of pieces A and B. So make sure the raw edges are matching up and then again, straight stitch with a two centimeter seam allowance. Press that seam nice and flat. I'm using a sleeve board to help me do it here and then you just want to press it all to the back. And they're really starting to look like jeans now. Well done, everyone. Before we go any further, I just wanted to jump back in to let you know, now is a really good time to try the legs of your trousers on. So give them a little go, see how they're fitting. If you need to make any adjustments, this is a great time to do it. You might want to take them in at the waist a little bit or let them out at the waist a little bit or on the hips. You've got plenty of room in the seam allowance to do this, so just find what feels good for you. Remember, if you're altering the top of the trousers, you'll also need to slightly alter the waistband so that it still fits, so just bear that in mind. But otherwise, let's crack on. Let's jump onto the waistband, so grab pieces H and I, and make sure they're right sides together in the same way that I've got illustrated in the booklet and in this film, so that you end up with a waistband the right way round and we're just gonna sew that center back seam with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance and press it open on both of them. 
Now we grab our buckle pieces, K and L, and put them right sides together. And we are going to sew all the way around with a one centimeter seam allowance, nice and neat as you can on the corners. Next up we sew all the way around piece J, again with a one centimeter seam allowance, and these are ready to trim and press. So we trim off as much of the seam allowance as we can on piece K and L, just going really close to the stitching because that will allow us to turn it through. You might again want to use a spi something spiky or pokey to make sure you get a really nice clean finish and a great point at the end of that piece. Once it's turned through, we want to press it and press all the way around where your stitch line is, just like we did on the pockets, making sure we get a really nice crisp edge and nice pointy corners. It can be a little bit fiddly this bit, so just take your time. And again, jumping onto piece K, we're gonna go all the way around the stitch line, just folding in those edges and getting a really nice crisp finish. Once you've pressed them, you can also trim away any excess little bits that you don't want to be seen and just make sure it's all sitting really nice and flat. Now we grab the buckle and thread it through piece J, folding it back and then we're going to top stitch across to hold the buckle in place on that side. Once again, if you haven't marked your drill points from the pattern, grab the pattern and just use a chalk to mark them. And these are a rough guide of where you want your buckle to be, but feel free to, again, adjust as you want them. So I'm doing my buckle slightly further out than the drill points because I know I want to really be able to cinch these trousers in. Once you're happy, pin them in place. And again, take your time on this to make sure you get all of the little points and corners really nice and accurate and where you want them. Pins are definitely your friend here. Voila, top stitch that down, doing a beautiful line of top stitching close to the folded edge. And then jump onto the other waistband and fold up the bottom curved edge by 1.5 centimeters. Lay the inner waistband that you just pressed onto the outer waistband which has the buckle on it and then pin all the way around the top edge. You can see here I've sewn it with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. I'm going to trim the corners and then press it with the iron and voila, it's ready to go on the top of the trousers. Make sure you pin the right side of the outer waistband to the right side of the trousers and line up the ends of the waistband with the ends of your zip fly. You can then stitch all the way around with a straight stitch, fold the waistband over, pin the other side in place and top stitch it down. If you're feeling nervous about that last line of top stitching, feel free to hand stitch it first. You can then decide whether you want to add a button or a hook and eye fastener. I've gone for a buttonhole here and sewn on a button for my last finishing touch at the top. We then jump onto the hem at the bottom and we turn it up as much as we want for the length of trouser that we want. I've done it one centimeter and then one centimeter again. And then just top stitched all the way around, nice and close to the folded edge. And that is your pair of Thelma trousers finished. You've absolutely smashed it. Well done, everyone. I'm so proud of you all.
congrats everyone, you've made it to the end and you've made yourself a beautiful pair of Thelma trousers. We love to see your make, so if you're on Instagram and wanna tag us at Make My Wardrobe, we would totally love to see them. Don't forget we have loads more online tutorials on our website, makemywardrobe.com, so you can literally learn to make anything with us, or come on down to our studio in Bristol and come and make in person. Take care, lots of love, bye.